Hello, this is Sean from DeRosa Education and Research. One of the most interesting situations in mathematics is when someone proves something cannot be proven. In other words, you have a problem and your solution is showing that it cannot be solved. While on the surface this sounds like some form of tomfoolery, it is an actual thing. To understand how this can occur, we must understand that mathematics is based on a system of axioms. These axioms are the basic ideas that mathematicians agree should be obvious. When you use a system of axioms, it is essential that the axioms are consistent. By this we mean it should not be possible to prove a certain result is both true and false using these axioms. The thing is, there are many different logically consistent systems of axioms. Later I'll give an example of how this leads to unsolvable problems. The most widely accepted system of axioms is called ZFC. If you don't know what this is, don't worry, most mathematicians don't bother learning the axioms in ZFC. The important thing is they accept them. All the C stands for the axiom of choice, which came under some scrutiny due to the barnack tarski paradox. I may do a video on this in the future. I'll now give an example of a problem that is not solvable in ZFC. This problem is called the continuum hypothesis. To understand the continuum hypothesis, we must first understand a way to measure the size of infinite sets. We do this through a concept called cardinality. The general idea of cardinality is to say two sets of the same cardinality if there's a way to pair all the elements in the first set with all the elements in the second set. Formally, we say there's a bijection between the two sets. Countable infinity is infinity that denotes the cardinality of the natural numbers 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot i.e. positive whole numbers. This is also the cardinality of the integers, that is a set of natural numbers, together with 0 and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, dot dot dot, i.e. positive and negative whole numbers. Interestingly, the rationals, which denotes fractions where the numerator and denominator are integers and the denominator is not 0, is also countable. It may seem strange that in some sense, these sets all have the same size, since it, since it seems like the rationals should be bigger than the naturals. However, it is not hard to find a way to pair the naturals and the rationals to show they indeed have the same cardinality. If you are wondering whether there are any uncountable sets, the answer is yes. An example is a set of real numbers. A precise definition is a bit complicated, but informally you can think of them as any number with a decimal representation. The cardinality of the reals is called C for continuum. It can be shown using the Cantor diagonalization argument that the reals are not countable. The continuum hypothesis then asks the question, are there sets with the cardinality strictly between these two, i.e. something too big to be countable but not big enough to have a cardinality of C? This question is unsolvable with ZFC. This means we can assume that such sets exist, take this as an axiom, add it to ZFC, and still get a logically consistent system of mathematics. We can also assume no such sets exist, add this axiom to ZFC, and get a logically consistent system of mathematics. If this concept of unsolvable problems confused and angered you, share this video with your friends so they too can become confused and angry. Also do the usual YouTube stuff of liking, commenting, and sharing. Also check out my book on Amazon, it has nothing to do with the content of this video, but it could be useful if you want to improve your numerical reasoning. If you don't need to improve your numerical reasoning, you should buy it because it has a nice looking cover. If you like this video so much, you feel inspired to buy 1000 copies, burn them, and sacrifice a goat in the fire, in my name, I won't object, I just advise you to comply with local laws regarding fire creation and animal sacrifice.